Welcome back design students. In this video we're going to continue our bowl of candy project by setting up the particle system to fill our bowl with candy. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is switch from the modeling menu to the FX menu. And that gives us a whole bunch of different choices up here that are based on the dynamics included in Maya. The one we want is the particles. So click particles and select create emitter. And this emitter will emit particles. And then move the emitter up and you can see it's a little green thing here. You can also see that it's now in our outliner. And if we grab our time slider and move it forward, you can see that particles will come out of this emitter. Now we're going to need a lot more frames to actually fill our bowl in this. So let's come down to our time slider and in this box right here, type in 1000. And that gives us, sorry, 1000. And that gives us 1000 frames, but we can't see them because we're only zoomed in to 100. You can see that right here. And that also tells us here that 100 frames are visible. Grab the view slider and move it forward so that all of your 1,000 frames are visible. And now we need to change some of the settings for our particles. Click the end particle in your outliner and then you'll see the bounding box that surrounds the area of the particles. In the attributes editor, on the end particle node here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different rollouts here. The first thing we want to do is look at the particle size. And we need to change that from what it is here to maybe one. And we're not going to see a change unless we drag the slider back and then drag forward again. Let's try two. And we still see no change. The reason is, is because we need to change another setting. So let's close particle size and go to shading. And right now the particles are displayed as points we want them to be displayed as spheres. Once we click that, you can see that now we have spheres. But they're all melded together. And this might be fine if we were simulating lava or water or something, but we're not. We're to want to simulate some gumballs. So let's come to collisions and check self collide. And once you do that, you'll see that now the gumballs cascade out and collide with each other and are spread out. I think that maybe two is too big, so I'm going to back going to go back to particle size and maybe make them one or even one and a half. That's probably about right for me. Your numbers may be different. Now we need to fix two things here. First thing is we need to guide the particles into the ball. And we also need to make sure that they fill the bowl and don't just fall through it like they're doing now. If I were to let this play for all 1000 frames, they'll just continue to come out as long as the animation runs. And that'll be way too many pieces of candy for the bowl. So we also need to keyframe the emitter to stop when the bowl is full. If your animation runs too fast like mine is, you might want to right click on the play button and under playback speed change it to real time and then it will run more normally. In order to guide our gumball candies into our bowl we're going to create a funnel. So in your modeling shelf come to the cylinder button and create a cylinder. Move it up so you can see it, and then scale it out so that it's about the diameter of the ball, and then scale it up some more, and then move it up so that it sits just under the particle emitter. And then we're going to switch to vertex mode, grab these top vertices, get the scale tool, and scale in the X and Z axes only, like so. And now we have a funnel. Then I think I'll also maybe switch back to object mode and maybe move mine up a little more. 
Now it's not really a funnel yet because we still have faces on the top and the bottom. So switch to face mode and then drag a marquee selection across the top just like I'm doing here and that will select the top and all the side faces. And they're going to hold down control and drag a marquee selection like so to deselect the side faces but not the top and then push delete on your keyboard. And then do the same thing for the bottom. Now we have something that looks like a funnel. But we need interfaces. So still in face mode, select the whole funnel. And we're going to extrude it just like we did the bowl. We don't have to worry about this offset at all if we don't want to. This is just for guiding our particles. And then let's switch to object mode and select both the funnel and the bowl and we now need to make them objects that will collide with our particles. Right now they just the particles just go through. We need to make them collide so we need to make these two things what are called passive colliders. So select the funnel and the bowl and come up to in cloth and select create passive collider. And then you'll see this red line here advancing across the bottom. That means it's updating our settings. And if you push play, you'll see that now the particles collide with the funnel and fill the bowl and spill out over the top. If we want to see any changes, we have to go back to zero, make changes, and then we'll see them as we play again. I'm going to move my emitter up a little bit more because I want to see the particles. And now we need to animate this so that we don't emit particles the whole time and have our ball overflow. So select your particle emitter and then come to the emitter node right here and this is the rate here at which the emitter is emitting particles. Let's change that to 25 and click play. You can see now that we're generating a, a lot fewer particles and they will eventually fill the bowl but it's going to happen at a lot slower rate. We need to note when the bowl is about full. Looks like for me it's somewhere in this neighborhood. So now we need to scrub our playhead back to frame 1. And we need to keyframe this rate value from whatever it is, which in my case is 25, so that it goes down to 0 when we want the particles to be finished emitting. And at that time the bowl should be full. So I think the best place to do this is in the channel box, which is over here in your tabs. Remember your three tabs over here. Click the channel box. And if you have the emitter selected over here, you should see all of its settings listed here. Rate is what we want to keyframe. So hover over the word rate, right click on it, and select key selected. And you'll see that it turns red. And then you'll also see down here in the timeline a keyframe. And then let's grab our playhead and move it forward to about 400 or so. Maybe 400, yeah. I don't know. We may have to move this. And then come up to the rate and change it. Click on it and change it from whatever it is to zero. And then click, right click on the word rate and select key selected. And you will see another keyframe here. Drag the playhead back to 1 and click play. And we need to watch here and make sure that we get enough pieces of candy to fill the bowl and not overflow. Notice here that my emitter has stopped emitting particles but my bowl is not full. So what I need to do is make this run longer. 
or I need to increase the rate. But the easiest thing to do is to grab this keyframe here and move it to make it run longer. To do that, you hold down shift, hover over the keyframe, hold down shift, press down on your middle mouse wheel and highlight that keyframe so it's highlighted in red. And then, once it's highlighted, you hold down your middle mouse button and you can move it. I'm going to move mine ahead to 600. And as you can see, I now have way more pieces of candy in my bowl than I did before. If I want even more, then I hold down shift and my middle mouse button, grab that keyframe like so, and then hold down my middle mouse button and move it further ahead. And then drag my playhead back to zero and play it again. Okay, I think that's good enough for me. In the next video, we're going to set this up for final render. We're going to apply some advanced materials to the particles and the bowl, and we're going to hide the funnel and set up the scene for our final render. And I'll see you then.